Today I'm going to show you how to make a professional looking wooden storm window without expensive woodworking tools. When the weather turns colder, these storm windows can make a huge difference in your comfort and energy bills. And these storms are totally DIY friendly and the perfect fit for any old house. So grab your tools and let's make some sawdust. To get the specific plans and how to measure, you'll need to visit the full post I linked to in the description. But to get started, I'm cutting some 1x4 and 1x6 cypress to length. All you'll need for each storm window is one of each of these, and you'll be left with little to no waste the way I've set it up. Once you get them cut, it's time to take them over to the table saw. Now to rip everything to length, I've set my fence to 1 and 11 sixteenths. That should rip the 1x4 almost in half, depending on your blade curve. Uh, if you need to, run the second piece through just a little bit to shave it off so you've got two pieces that are identical. Those are going to be your styles. Now you're going to take the 1x6, run it through, and you're going to have one piece that will be your top rail. And I'm going to move the fence over to 1 inch, and that's going to cut my meeting rail. Run that 1x6 through again. And then what you're left over with is your bottom rail. Super easy, all the pieces are now milled and ready to assemble. I like to lay them out here on the table first. Bottom rail is the widest. Meeting rail one inch, top rail one and 11 sixteenths. And I'm gonna measure the, uh, transfer the measurements I have for my uh, meeting rail from the prime window onto the storm window. I measured it previously. Now I know how everything fits, I'm ready to drill. For this I use the Craig K4 pocket hole jig. It's really easy. It, I mean, it's just fantastic for this. It's got a vacuum attachment. You notice as I'm drilling, there are no uh, sawdust or wood chips coming out. It just keeps it totally clean, which is really helpful in my extremely messy shop. I forgot to drill the other two pocket holes on the uh, bottom rail, but I'll do that right now. And the bottom rail is wide enough. I was able to do the two wider hole settings for more support. And then on the top rail, I drilled the two closest, the two holes that are closest to each other. I wanted two pocket holes on each side just for the extra support. The meeting rail, I'm just doing one pocket hole um, and uh, that's more than sufficient. It really doesn't do a whole lot there. So once I've got everything drilled, I can set it all in place, take a look at it, and now uh, clamp your uh, storm window together and insert your uh, pocket hole screws. For three quarter inch material like I'm using here, Craig recommended a one and a quarter inch uh, pocket hole screw and uh, that worked just great. You want to make sure you do clamp everything. If you don't, then uh, it's going to move around on you, but uh, make sure you're right on your uh, lines and measurements and everything set and square. And uh, I just took one clamp and just moved it along as we got there and got it set up for the uh, next set of screws. You can get screws in different lengths and uh, Craig has a handy uh, guide in each um, uh, in their, with their stuff that will tell you what size screw to use for what size uh, wood. But for here we're using three quarter inch wood and one and a quarter inch screws. Once you've done that, it's time to come through and put some, uh, I use Type Bond 3, some waterproof glue. These are going to be outside, so I want a uh, wood glue that is going to do well outdoors. You want to make sure you get plenty of glue all around the dowel, top, bottom, sides, everywhere, and in the uh, pocket hole as well. I'd rather have a bunch that squirts, uh, squirts out and then you can clean it up later. That's a whole lot better than not having enough glue and these things pop out. So. Just make sure they're set. They are going to be a little bit large, that's how they're designed. And uh, once the glue has cured, you come through and uh, clean off the excess. But for now, you push it into the hole as much as you can, make sure it's covered in glue, and we're going to let them dry. A few hours later, I come back with a flush cut saw, and I trim off as much of the dowel as I can. There's always going to be a little bit left over. And then I'm going to come through and sand everything smooth with 80 grit paper. Now I'm ready to grab my laminate router and I put on here just a simple rabbiting bit, 3 8 inch by quarter inch and I, uh, I'm cutting 3 8 down by quarter inch and you could do 3 8 by 3 8 or th half by half, whatever you want to do, um, but I'm going all the way around each opening there because on my storm window I've got a top and a bottom piece of glass and this is going to create the rabbit that your glass is going to sit in. It's going to leave you with rounded corners that's fine because we're going to come back and square those off later. Once you're done there, it's time to get everything cleaned up. I was priming on this same table, so I figured what better time to vacuum up all the massive uh, sawdust and waste and wood chips that the router creates. It was all over me and all over the floor. 
Hey there. Now I'm coming through and I'm going to clean up each of these rounded corners with a chisel. It's really important when you get these corners done that you make them nice and square. One, just simply for the appearance, you want it to be nice square corners. But uh, the other issue is your glass is going to rest in here. So if you leave any chunks of wood there that the glass could potentially get caught on, you're possibly, when you're bedding your glass and setting it in place later, you're possibly, possibly going to end up with some broken glass and uh, it's just going to be a royal pain. So make sure they're clean, square corners, and there isn't any uh, leftover pieces of wood. Even if it's just a little chunk in the corner, it could certainly catch on the glass and be a real problem. Next, I took this opportunity to grab some 80 grit paper and uh, go through and sand absolutely everything because uh, I'm going to be priming this in just a little bit. So I want all the joints especially, but all the surface of it, get the mill glaze off the wood, make sure everything's sanded um, inside. I'm not too worried about the rabbits uh, because, uh, well, the glass is going to hide in there, but uh, once you've got that done, come through, make sure everything's square because you're going to start cutting your glass soon. If it's not square, you can rack it and fix it. Measure everything, all of my corners, all the measurements I can, and come through and cut my glass. Now I've got another video on how to cut glass that goes into some of the specifics, but basically you just transfer the measurements. I use a T-square and a carbide glass cutter, and you come through and cut a nice straight line. You're going to move it to the edge of the table and pop that piece of glass off. Take your other measurement for the second piece of glass for the uh, second cut on there. And every time I cut glass, it looks like somebody's just pulling me off the table, but it's really the only way I know how to cut glass, st uh, cut a straight line without a guide on it, just freehanding it. So watch here, somebody's going to pull me off. Ah. <laughs> All right, enough fun cutting glass. Take it, test fit it before we go any further. Make sure that you're in good shape. If you need to make some adjustments, go for it. You can chisel out a little wood, or you can cut the glass if you really miscut it like I have in the past. And now you're gonna come through, cut your uh, other piece of glass. Don't assume that the top piece and the bottom piece are the same. They usually are not. Your meeting rail is set up on your storm to match where it is on the window. And that does not always equate to the same size piece of glass on the top of the storm window as it does on the bottom. Snap it on the edge. Boom. And we're ready for the top piece. If everything fits like it should, it's time to prime your window. I recommend an oil-based uh, primer, a lot better than latex. It sinks into the wood better, helps seal it better. You want to coat all sides of your uh, storm window here with the oil-based primer and do this before you set your glass in glazing putty. You're going to get this in here cover everything in the rabbits, on the face, everything. If there's wood showing, it needs to be primed. Next day, I know it says 12 hours later and I'm still wearing the same outfit, but yes I am. Now just take a 150 uh, grit sanding sponge, go through, knock off the uh, highs and lows, any of the rough spots on there, and get a nice smooth sash so it'll be in good shape when you paint it. And uh, you're gonna be left with a decent amount of sanding dust, so when you're done and you've ensured that you've got everything, blow it off with a hose, wipe it down, brush it off, whatever you need to do. Now we're going to bed our glass. I'm taking some type N. I'm, I'm using a sausage or a bolt gun and uh, we thin our putty a little bit with uh, linseed oil and you just put it all through the rabbits. You can put this on by hand with a, a putty knife, but uh, we prefer the caulk gun. It goes a lot faster. You set that putty in place. You're going to get your glass and place it in there. Make sure it's lined up. I use a putty knife sometimes if it's not squarely in there. Press it into place, and then I'm going to set my points. I have a video on how to use this tool. It's a glazing point driver. It's amazing how much faster it makes glazing and bedding windows. And then you can take some of the uh, glazing putty. doesn't have to be pretty. Just fill it in there. Get it in there, and you're going to come back and tool it in just a second. So I just fill in all sides here. Make sure you've got enough to work with. It's a little bit messy, but this is a linseed oil putty. Sarco makes it. We sell some of that in our store on the Craftsman blog. 
and because uh, we just use it every day and it's fantastic. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of detail here, but we do have another video on how to glaze windows, which is just like this and goes into some more detail. But you want to tool it to a nice bevel and then clean up those corners as much as you can. Nice beveled 45 degree miters and take off the excess putty. You can do that all the way around. And uh, this is just, uh, this is important. This is how you weather seal the glass in there. And it's really attractive if you can do a nice job. If your putty looks messy, it can look a little messy, but it can still work. But uh, it takes a little bit of fooling with to get it right. Next, we're gonna spread some whiting, which is basically chalk dust. You can use pumice as well. And uh, that cleans all the oils off the glass. If you notice, it's getting everything clean. It's a little dusty and messy, but that's the best way to get the glass clean without really disturbing the uh, putty. And in a couple days, this sash will be ready for paint and installation. Well, I hope I've convinced you to build your own wood storm windows with this video. They're a fantastic addition to any old house. They're energy efficient, noise blocking, extends the life of your prime window, and they're cheaper than replacement windows. For more old house tips, visit me at thecraftsmanblog.com, and don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube by clicking the logo in the center.